actually, this is a good session to end the day because, um, uh, to be honest, it's a little bit silly. Uh, it's really just an excuse to uh, uh, to play with uh, with CloudWatch events, to play with uh, Spark streaming, and uh, you know, obviously, this is not intended to be deployed uh, in in real life, or, or or maybe it is. But if you do something smart with this, uh, I, I'd be really curious to know. Okay, so this is really just. Uh, you know, just an example of, of what you could do combining a few uh, AWS services. But I, I think it's still cool. And some of these topics are actually, uh, uh, you know, you, we don't talk so much about them. So, you know, I felt, hey, let's, let's combine them and, and show them to you. So what we're going to do really uh, is we're going to, uh, to catch uh, EC2 events. Uh, so instances starting, instances terminating, instances stopping, etc. And we're going to, uh, to funnel them from EC2 to uh, a Spark cluster, right? For literally no good reason other than doing it. Um, first of all, let's talk about EC2 lifecycle events. Who, who, who knows about that? Who's heard about that? Yeah, a couple of people. Um, it's, uh, it's something that, you know, usually you don't really look at. So, so basically, what this means uh, is this is the, the normal life cycle of an EC2 instance. So some of the states are well known. You see them in the console when you start and, and stop uh, instances. So for example, uh, uh, you know, pending and in-service and terminating and terminated, the, 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 you know, the vertical ones, the one in the middle, I mean, you're used to seeing them, right? But actually, the, there are some extra states uh, which are um, uh, pending wait, pending proceed, terminating wait, terminating proceed, uh, which um, um, most of the time are not used, but uh, there's a way to insert some extra processing um, uh, between those states. And uh, so what that means really is before an instance actually goes in service, you're able to execute some processing, and we'll see what we can do here. And before uh, uh, an instance actually terminates, you're also able to insert some processing. And that's pretty useful. So what can you do with that? Uh, well, actually, if you saw my presentation this morning on code deploy, uh, code deploy uses lifecycle uh, events uh, to deploy code on starting instances, right? When an instance starts, code deploy gets a notification and, and deploys code that needs to go onto that server. So that's an example. Here, here you can see on that slide some other examples of what you could want to do uh, when an instance starts or terminates. Register them with DNS, grab some logs before the instance dies. And th there are many initialization and cleanup tasks that you can automate like that, and, and which are pretty inconvenient to automate if you don't have uh, events such as these, right? So um, there are many, uh, many ideas on, on, on what to do here. So what we're going to build is this. And yes, uh, there's Lambda again. Uh, you didn't think you could uh, escape it, right? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start some EC2 uh, activity. So for example, we're going to start some instances and stop some instances and you know basically uh, change their state. Um, this is going to send automatically uh, an event to CloudWatch. And, uh, I'm not sure I understood 100% of what the previous gentleman said, but he did. <laughs> I understand the CloudWatch part. Uh, but uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a part of CloudWatch where you can actually uh, uh, define rules on those events and say, okay, when EC2 activity happens, when auto-scaling activity happens, um, do something. And uh, so what we're going to do in this case, we're going to call a Lambda function, ah, pretty simple. And this Lambda function is going to uh, write those events into Firehose. Uh, Firehose is a higher level uh, abstraction on top of Kinesis. Um, I guess you're familiar with it. So it's a s very scalable pipe that in this case, I'm going to point to S3, okay? So I'm going to write those events to S3 uh, in, in a bucket. And um, I will uh, start a Spark cluster, who is uh, constantly listening on the for new files in this bucket. And uh, so anything, anytime something happens there, 
it's going to grab the lines inside the file and print them. Okay, so um, again, this is not doing anything useful. This is just illustrating the path from EC2 to somewhere else. But I'm going to highlight uh, the, the specific parts where you could insert something useful. Okay, um, so let's uh, well let's look at the actual console and how these uh, things are configured, right? Okay. Okay, so here's the CloudWatch part. So you've got this, you know, you know CloudWatch alarms and logs, uh, like in the previous presentation. And there's this part here called events, and uh, that's the part I'm interested in. And this is where I can define rules. So as of now, you can use some different event, so event sources, like uh, EC2 instant uh, instance. Uh, uh, state change, like uh, auto scaling, or even uh, API AWS API calls. So you could say when a specific API is called within AWS, do something. That could be really useful as well. And uh, and you can add targets, right? And those targets could be um, you know SNS uh, sending a notification with SNS, sending a message to an SQS queue, writing to Kinesis Stream, or in my case calling a lambda function, right? So that's what I'm going to do. So I have defined two rules here, which are very similar. One for auto-scaling. Okay, so basically what it says here is anytime something happens in auto-scaling for all events, please call this lambda function, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And the same thing goes for EC2 lifecycle. Anytime an EC2 instant instance changes state, please call this lambda function, right? So it's very simple to do. Um, this is how you do it in the console. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it with the command line as well. Okay. Uh, so um, let's look at the lambda function first. Can you see OK in the back, or is it too small? Yeah? Good? OK. So it's a, it's a Python function. So uh, what this does, you know, what it needs to do is, yeah. Uh, it's going to take that event sent by uh, CloudWatch, and it needs to write it into Firehose. So I need to grab uh, 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 access to Firehose, which I'm doing here. Um, then in from that event, I'm extracting the uh, instance ID, right, that you see in the EC2 console. I'm extracting the state, and I'm printing this, right? So just saying, hey, instance X is in this given state. And I'm um, putting the whole record into my Kinesis stream. Okay, so obviously this isn't doing anything useful, but this is what you would want to do, right? This is what this is where you would use lifecycle hooks to do something useful when the instance starts, or when the instance terminates, or when the instance uh, is stopped, for example. Okay, so you would look at the state and say, okay, if the instance is pending then you know, I get a chance to do something before it actually starts and becomes uh, in service, so this is what I would do. If the instance is terminating, you know, it's dying, so maybe I need to get some logs, maybe I need to do some cleanup, and this is where I would do it, right? So a Lambda function is uh, a great way to do that. Um, the only limitation is uh, you need to do that fairly quickly. Uh, you cannot hold an instance in the terminating state forever. There's a timeout there. So, you know, you can't run anything that would take too long. And a Lambda function has a maximum timeout of five minutes anyway. So it needs to be fairly fast, right? So how would you, how would you do this with the command line? Just quickly. Because no one likes to click in the console. Right? Never do that. Uh, because the problem is you don't remember, you don't remember what, you, what you've done and then it's a problem. Scripts are more repeatable. So these are the, the JSON descriptions for, uh, for the rules and this is what you would do, really. Uh, so uh, once, the, oops, sorry. once the function exists, uh, you would grab its, uh, you would grab its uh, ARN, right? It's a resource, uh, resource name. You would assign, you would create a rule uh, so in this case for auto scaling in CloudWatch, uh, you would define the Lambda function as a target. 
and uh, you would grant permission to uh, CloudWatch to invoke uh, the, no sorry, you would grant permission to the Lambda function to write into Firehose. So you need a, uh, you need a rule and, um, and, a, and a role in there, okay? So fairly simple. So Lambda function we've already seen. Um, just a reminder, but that's, you know, that's a useful thing to know. Um, every time you create a Lambda function and uh, specifically a new version of a Lambda function, there's a CloudWatch log group that is created automatically. So anything that the function prints actually ends up in a log. So uh, just for reference, this are, these are the commands you would use to grab those logs actually. No, again, not go in the console and read the logs. Uh, probably you want to fetch the Lambda logs and parse them and see what's going on in there, okay? Um, then, I need a, a fire hose uh, from uh, pointing to S3, so not much to, to show here. I mean, you just create that or with one API call or just one click, really. Uh, so uh, uh, it's gonna point to S3, to, the, to this bucket here, and it's gonna flush every time one megabyte has been written or every 60 seconds, right? And I'm not compressing data because <laughs> I never found out how uh, to read compressed file in Spark. If someone knows that, I'd be happy to know, but it seems to be an unsolved problem for mankind, or me especially. Um, and so uh, at the end of the rainbow, I have the uh, S3 bucket where I should see my files showing up, okay? And obviously I created a Spark cluster because that takes a few minutes and we have no time to waste, all right? So uh, shall we try that? Uh, so first of all, I should probably Connect to my Spark cluster. Yes, ASCII art, fantastic. Launch the Spark shell, which takes way too long to start, but that's fine. Yeah, come on. And uh, what am I gonna do now? Well, I just need to grab my Spark code, right? So this is the Spark code. It's a Scala code, actually. Anybody who writes Scala? Did you tell your family? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you tell them you're a PHP developer, huh? Yeah, it's safer. Uh, okay, so it's a, simple, uh, it's a simple job. So this is just importing some classes. This is just saying, uh, asking uh, uh, Spark to shut up most of the time because it's very verbose. Uh, then this is just giving access to S3 because uh, the Spark job needs to listen to S3. So don't get excited, these are, these are not my master keys, right? So this is just a, a, C, uh, a very limited account which I will delete after the demo, so sorry. You don't get access to my free AWS superpower account, no, sorry. I'm creating a streaming context which will execute every 10 seconds. I'm, uh, and uh, and uh, I'm creating uh, a stream uh, from all the new files created in this bucket, right? So this, this will run every 10 seconds, and what would it do? It will just print the lines, okay? So I will just grab that, and hopefully paste it without error in there. Yes. Okay, and ho there it goes. So um, so it's gonna start in a in few seconds, right? Okay, so you're going to see this message every 10 seconds, right? So for now, you know, nothing's happening. Nothing's uh, being written to uh, S3 because there is no EC2 activity. But let's start some EC2 activity and see if we get some output. All right, so what could I do? I could restart my Minecraft server, for example, which is obviously uh, for professional purposes. Start. Um, I could stop my machine learning client. I don't think I'll need it today. Stop. And I could launch some silly instances just to create some traffic in there. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Launch. Okay, so 
remember the, the architecture. Here it is. Okay, so I created, uh, you know, I started an instance, I stopped one, and I, uh, what did I do? And I, I resumed one, so that's multiple events. Okay, so CloudWatch gets that. It's going to call the Lambda three times. Lambda is going to write into Firehose. Firehose is going to flush into S3. So probably that's going to be in one single file. And the Spark job should see that fi this file, uh, read all the lines from it, and display it, right? So hopefully this is running. So do we have, yeah. So we have a file, good. We'll look at the events later. Yeah, it worked. Right? No, no, no come on. It, it's, it's, uh, no. <laughs> Not this one, but thank you anyway. You're very kind. <laughs> okay, so, um, oh, and of course, if I look at the file, I'll see, I will see the exact same thing. Okay, so um, this could be, how, how real time could this be, right? Uh, the limiting factor is, uh, in this case, is a fire hose, which will not flush more often than 60 seconds. So at most, you're going to waste for 60 seconds. Well, maybe 70, actually, because if you're really unlucky, you have the 10 extra seconds in, in Spark. But I could lower that to one second. So let's say, you know, under a minute at most, uh, and you would, get, uh, you would get those notifications. So uh, let's do it one more time just to see if I wasn't lucky. Um, Let's kill the, all right, let's do it the other way. So I'll start that guy. I'll terminate, no, not this one, yeah. Just terminate this one. All right, man, Minecraft, I don't need it today. Stop. Whoop. Oh, it is stopped, so I should start. All right. Start. All right. Okay, so same story, more events into S3. Uh, and uh, so I should see a file in a, a one, maybe less than one minute. And, uh, and Spark again will grab it. Okay. So, I, you know, I keep saying this is silly, but okay, you could probably still do some stuff with that. Um, you could, uh, you know, obviously you could, I don't know, do some monitoring. Uh, you could do, uh, the, the EC2 use case is probably not the most interesting. But uh, uh, tracking API calls, for example, that could be interesting. To say, okay, this specific API has been called, and, uh, and this could trigger uh, automatically a job somewhere uh, using a Lambda function or maybe using even Spark. So, you know, it's just a way to show, once again, here's the file and should be, uh, yep, here, no, here. Yep, here it is, right. okay, so works reasonably well. Um, it's just to show, once again, that uh, if when, when you start using managed services uh, like uh, CloudWatch, like Lambda, like Firehose, uh, and even EMR, uh, you can build rather complex things uh, with very, very little code. And um, you've heard the serverless story 29 times since this morning, so I'm not going to repeat it. But um, um, this is really, for me, the, the true power of those architectures, is that you write very little code. It's mostly about configuration, connecting services like Kinesis, like Lambda, like CloudWatch, like, in this case, even S3, EMR, et cetera. And you, know, you probably uh, end up writing more CLI scripts then you end up writing code, uh, which I think is good uh, because it's uh, you can automate a lot of stuff. All right, um, so I think that's it. So you will get the slides later on, of course. Right, if you have feedback, happy to read it. And uh, thanks again, Toda Rabah, and uh, <laughs> thanks for sticking with me until the end of the day.